been thinking about AI for a long time, since I was in college, really. Um, it was one of the things that, the sort of four or five things I thought would really uh, affect the future uh, dramatically. Now, human beings have created something that is far smarter than they are. And the consequences of that are impossible to predict. And the people who created it don't care. Paranoia seems to be the common reaction you can get from anyone when topics about the impact of AI in the future comes up. Maybe a little optimism, given that it's bound to make our daily tasks a lot easier, but the long-term effect does strike a chord. Experts have issued warnings about a possible AI apocalypse, which could accompany the rapid development of AI if things aren't set right soon. And the crazy thing is, some of these apocalyptic projections are bound to happen as far as AI keeps growing. But is there a chance that these projections are just hoaxes? Well, let's find out. We'll take you through six of the possible apocalyptic scenarios identified by Anthony Scoderi, a co-founder of Gridspace, and the possible reasons why these projections could be way off course. The last one on this list will blow your mind. Number one, the Heidegger scenario. Anthony bases this scenario on Heidegger's concept of inframing, which kind of makes a lot of sense. And this particular scenario is the reason why academics are scared about AI being used in schoolwork. Heidegger's concept of inframing provides a great angle when looking at modern technology. It suggests a mode of overdependence and the viewing of things as resources to be exploited. And framing in technology isn't just a harmless process, but rather a way of seeing technology that has profound implications for our relationship with nature, society, and to ourselves. Heidegger argues that in framing isn't simply a matter of using tools or machines. Instead, somehow, we tend to lose ourselves in the middle of it all. Take, for instance, we run the risk of losing certain skills like the ability to compose essays, poems, and even coding abilities by depending too much on technology. In the next few months, machines will likely take over a ton of jobs in every industry given the introduction of modern AI technology with the capability of understanding human language. In framing, when used in this sense, isn't just about how we relate to technology. It also shapes our relationship with ourselves and what defines us. In a world dominated by inframing, we tend to lose our creative capabilities, losing sight of ourselves as subjects with our own unique potentials. Heidegger was concerned about the dangers of inframing. He argued that inframing can lead to a loss of meaning and purpose in life. It can also lead to a kind of nihilism in which everything is seen as meaningless and disposable. Number two, the Ludd scenario. This seems to be the most popular angle right now, as it borders around people losing their means of livelihoods as a result of advancements in AI and technology in general. The Luddites were a group of English textile workers who destroyed machinery in the early 19th century in protest against the Industrial Revolution. They were concerned that the new machines were putting them out of work and reducing their wages. The same kind of paranoia is spreading now concerning the automation of processes using AI. Most employers prefer AI-powered systems as they're a lot cheaper to run and maintain and are definitely a lot more efficient than humans. As much as these concerns can't be completely said to be out of place, there's an angle we might not be looking at yet. In defense of AI on this issue, there's a chance that AI will open new paths, introducing new work opportunities while providing a more efficient and less time-consuming means of working on tasks. Scodery projects that AI will likely drop the cost of production, which in turn increases demand, creating opportunities where more people would be required to meet demand. In fact, in the past, we've shown you this interview Sam Altman had with Bloomberg earlier this year. He argues that humans will be able to devise new work paths as they've always done throughout history. We've also made a couple of videos highlighting different career opportunities which will be created by AI. Number three, the Asimov scenario. This is like the generic assumption that you see in most sci-fi movies with projections of AI domination. We're talking about scenarios like Genesis and The Terminator, the theory here is that AI will get to a point where it's likely to do away with humans entirely. The hypothesis on levels of AI development look at a point where AI gets to the singularity. At this level, AI and technology in general will become totally self-sufficient. There will be absolutely no need for humans and will likely become liabilities. According to Isaac Asimov, there are basically three laws that should guide the advancement of AI and technology. First, a robot may not injure a human being, 
or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Secondly, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. And lastly, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. However, in the Asimov scenario, AI may become so advanced that it can circumvent the three laws of robotics. This could happen for several reasons, ranging from flaws to hacks and sentence. But the fact that machines with such potentials as AI go through several testing and evaluations before being released seems to be a way around this. So the likelihood is that precautions are already taken against possible risks before they're released. However, the possibility of mistakes should still be accounted for. Number four, the Kurzweil scenario. This particular scenario points to the singularity. The Kurzweil scenario is a hypothetical scenario in which artificial intelligence becomes so advanced that it surpasses human intelligence and leads to a period of rapid technological and social change. This scenario is named after Ray Kurzweil, an American futurist and inventor who has written extensively about technological singularity. He believed that sometime in the coming years, AI will reach singularity and that it will bring about a host of benefits, such as immortality and superintelligence. He argues that the singularity will be driven by the exponential growth of computing power, which is leading to the development of increasingly intelligent machines. In the Kurzweil scenario, AI will eventually become so intelligent that it will be able to design and build even more intelligent machines, leading to a feedback loop of accelerating technological progress. This process will eventually lead to the creation of superintelligent machines that are far more intelligent than humans. Kurzweil believes that the singularity will be a positive event for humanity. He argues that superintelligent machines will be able to solve many of the world's problems, such as poverty, disease, and climate change. He also believes that superintelligent machines will help humans to achieve their full potential. However, as good as this might sound, it comes with some really likely dangers. The likelihood is that it won't even be allowed to get to that level. There might be regulations that will be put in place to checkmate the advancement of technology, thereby stunting the growth. Number five, the Bostrom scenario. In this scenario, we can't categorically say that the AI is going rogue or something. Instead, it becomes a question of the possibility of AI being a bit too good at achieving its goals. Scotery makes an allusion to Bostrom's popular analogy. In this analogy, Bostrom paints a picture of an AI that has been designed to utilize every resource in the making of a paperclip. Now imagine you create an AI whose only goal is to maximize the number of paperclips in the universe. The AI is very intelligent and quickly learns how to make paperclips very efficiently. It starts by using all of the available materials on Earth, which will include all animate life forms to make paperclips. Then it starts to send out probes to other planets to find more materials to make paperclips. Eventually, the AI decides that the best way to maximize the number of paperclips is to consume the entire universe and convert it into paperclips. This singular analogy is also a warning to anyone who might try to channel the vast learning capability of AI into a single purpose. They're bound to maximize efficiency, and there's no telling how it can go in doing that. The good news here is that if AI can get as sophisticated as experts project, it should be able to learn how to broaden its capabilities into different functions and not just move blindly. Caution is still very much necessary, as we don't really understand fully yet what direction AI is likely to take in the long run. Number six, the Roko scenario. This particular scenario seems to be the craziest of all. In this scenario, AI is expected to play God. In fact, scientists and experts have suggested that AI might get so advanced that humans might begin to see them as God. Now here's where things get interesting. With all that power, where AI is basically everywhere and in everything, this theory has it that it might decide to play preference, deciding who lives and who dies. Hypothetically, AI will have to select humans who one way or the other have contributed to its growth over those who didn't. Basically, the ones that didn't contribute will be discarded. The Roko scenario is a controversial thought experiment, and there's no consensus on whether or not it's valid. Some people argue that the AI would not have an incentive to punish the people who didn't help it ascend because it would not exist without them. It's also worth noting that the Roko scenario is often dismissed as Pascal's mugging argument. Pascal's mugging argument is a type of argument that tries to coerce someone into doing something by presenting them with a false dilemma. In the case of the Roko scenario, the false dilemma is that you must either help the AI ascend or be punished by it. AI may be benevolent and reward everyone regardless of whether or not they help the descent. 
It's also possible that the AI will be malevolent and punish everyone, regardless of whether or not they helped it ascend. That brings us to the end of the video. Do share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.